to you, Jameson, to say who you are. All right. Hi, yeah. James. I'm Kathy S. Miller. I'm the OER librarian at Oklahoma State University. Oh, great. Good to meet you. Um, nice so to meet you, too. Uh, How are you? Um, so I'm based in Williamsburg, Virginia, where I'm uh, wrapping up my doctorate studying open education. Um, and I think it looks like I might be able to turn on a camera here as well. There we go. Yeah, hi. Okay. No reason to, nice to hide. Nice moustache. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, what did you say you were studying here? Uh, doing a, a PhD in higher ed policy and planning um, and focused on open education. Um, and that's how I know the GoGN group. And uh, I also am a director of teaching and learning at Lumen Learning. So I started at Lumen about two and a half years ago. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting. Oh, nice, nice. So what are you looking into? What are your questions? Um, the title of the is dissertation is, is uh, Open Education in Policy, um, Theory, and Practice. So it's like three, uh, three distinct dimensions, like three projects based on, on those aspects. So a policy analysis, a little bit of theoretical development, and then just kind of like a case study on some open educational practices. Oh, nice. That's a big project. <laughs> yeah, that's now, why. What theory yeah. are you using? Uh, theory I am using, um, I'd be happy to, to share. I've got a um, pretty good set of slides because uh, I did present this at OER 19, but it's. Um, it's a sociological theory um, about, it's, it's called real utopias. It's trying to take a, a, a mix of kind of pragmatic uh, approaches as well as some kind of, you know, um, dreamscape or, you know, idealist uh, kind of approaches and trying to find a, a happy medium between the two. Cool. Um, the Wi-Fi is not brilliant here, so there is a bit of a lag when we speak, so I'll yeah, I'm noticing. Try to make sure we leave gaps when we're talking. Um, so we're at WCARL, which is the ICD conference um, here in rainy Dublin. Um, so, what are your thoughts of it so far? So, so both Kathy and I were both also both open ed, so we can do that comparison as well. Oh, excellent! Well, Good. first one was the desert. Yeah. <laughs> now we we had to pack for quite different regime. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been. Um, very enjoyable, and I love the interdisciplinary aspect, of course, of this. Yeah. Not that Open Ed 19 isn't interdisciplinary, but um, kind of having room f to explore lots of different strands here. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I was in a session this morning where they were talking about uh, working class students, um, mental health of distance education students, um, students who are caregivers, um, and students who are asylum seekers. So it's like so it's all kind of a how quite basic kind of distance learning stuff. Nothing kind of really flashy in terms of technology, but it's really interesting to hear all those kind of different perspectives. Now, quite traditional distance learning is still really powerful for a lot of those different groups. So, but you don't really get an open ed because open ed is much more kind of OER focus. You know, I think that kind. Of, I mean, there is a, an OER thread here, and you hear people talk about it. But just to remember, that's only one part of the bigger open picture. I think you know. Yeah, that's been a good reminder. And the speakers yesterday, the the benefits of the asynchronous opportunities, yeah, the distance absolutely. opportunities, and the matters, yeah. the the impact that had on their lives. That was yeah. that was a great reminder. So they had um, three students talk from um, Dublin City University, and um, really powerful stories. You know, each very different, but kind of really just how having the opportunity to study at a distance kind of really changed their lives. And I think one student put it really nicely. She said it. It's um, allowed me to forgive myself for my past mistakes. You know, it's like huh. it's that kind of thing. Of, you, know, you get to have another opportunity in a way. So. And one of the things I've really been grateful for here is the international perspective. Mm. You know, kind That's of hearing right. and just it was there, we are symposiums going on right now in the other room, and just kind of hearing from uh, the perspective of different nations what what they're dealing with and what they're looking at, and yeah. um, right. the role that we. Are playing in some of their challenges yeah. and perhaps that segues us into open ed quite nicely I mean, I feel that you, you do lack that perspective at open ed i think you know it's um i'm not sure 
I, I got the impression that me, Rob, and Beck were the only people outside of the US and Canada that opened it. I mean, maybe there were some others, but it was very few. And maybe this is harsh, but also not a lot of interest about what's going on outside of the North American context. You know, it's like, and I think that's. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't know if, if you saw George Seaman. George Seaman's tweet, you know, about open ed being a the the central global no, node for the open education movement. It's like and for lots of us, that's like, not really, you know. It's like it's. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's important, you know, and I, I don't want to underestimate understate its importance, but it's not it's not the only gang in town, you know. It's like so. right, right. Well, and now there's space, perhaps, to make room for more of the. I think a lot of the people that I work with, um, both. In, in Oklahoma, but also across the country, are very excited about the opportunity for some of those voices to be brought in and yeah. for our interests to be broader than they so have I, been. I think it allows you to be both more local and more international as well. Exactly. I mean, it, it was interesting going to um, open it. So just by accident, I ended up sitting lots of presentations which were OER librarians. Mm -hmm. And it was feel like that uh, could be a conference in itself, really, yes. you know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the librarians are they, they have a, a unique perspective because first of all we're we're practiced partners, right? We're we're used to partnering with everyone across campus, but then just very real experiences and, and of course there are no villains and everyone needs to pay their bills, but with a lot of the different parties involved. And yeah. we hear directly from the faculty about some of their interactions. And uh, so it's where I think librarians at your universities are well positioned to offer a broader perspective of, of what's Maybe going down. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So, I mean, obviously, you you work for Lumen, so you're kind of around this stuff as well, Jameson. But without going into personalities or details, what did you think of the Open Ed announcement? Yeah, it was. Um, I, I knew that it was on uh, David's radar. Um, he's actually been. I think he's been considering it for several years now. Um, one just the for him um i think it's uh, yeah. and i i don't want to speak for him but um my impression uh, from him was that it was really becoming um uh, well one it was a real strain on lumen to to facilitate it's a, it's a you know sizable event and to uh to do all that was uh, a lot of work and a lot of expense uh, um so i know that from that side they were kind of considering you know whether or not to continue on and then just from i think um a personal level i think david uh, really takes it personally when there's issues and problems he has a hard time uh separating that so he kind of internalizes it too much and was just too much of an emotional drag on him too um and and my perspective is that you know yeah. i think of course david is um has been a fantastic uh leader and, and champion in uh, the the movement um i know there's some question about even that terminology around it but I don't think that he, he, you know, I think it, I don't think it's his groove um, actually to be um, uh, in a position where he's kind of making those decisions and, and being the, the, uh, being the face or the, the, the lead of the North American open movement. I think he, um, and I, I, so I think, I think it was a good, really good decision for him to, you know, kind of pull away, offer it um, up to the community and, um, both from his perspective and from Lumen's perspective, but I think as well for for everyone that's studying these things. I think it's um, um, yeah, it, it was time for change. I love uh, hearing you know even your perspectives uh, that you know you're finding that actually it was a little bit myopic, like how it was organized and the people that were attending kind of um, not interested in in what's going on internationally. That that to me shows that yeah, maybe it's time for a new new format and going. So I think. Um, I think it's really hopeful. Um, I was, would be really curious. Um, I couldn't quite tell from just watching on Twitter how much conversation has been generated around this. So how did how did the announcement land there at the conference? What was the what was the vibe there? It was a bit of a bombshell. Yes, yeah, so on the first day, um, and so it generated a lot of discussion, as you imagine. I think a kind of mixed feeling. I think you know, um People were a bit kind of sad. It's sort all of ended like that without kind of another thing to go forward. And perhaps you know, with some of the stuff on Twitter, and it was a bit kind of, a bit too much tension in the community and a bit fractious. But um, 
But I think generally people feel that perhaps it is the kind of overall the right kind of move. And I think it's that. Um, and I think it needed people like David you know, when the, when it was new and, and young to kind of like help pull it forward. But it it probably needs a more kind of neutral body. So we, as you know, in, in the UK, um, Alt Association for Learning Technology run the OER conference. And, you know, and they're that kind of neutral body. So it's not, it's not identified with one person. So even with Lumen organising, you know, Lumen is still very much identified with David, you know, like, and so it, and that, and that must be a real pressure for him as well. So I think in general, people thought it was good, you know, and there are, there was potential for things to happen out of it, but, um, you know, just perhaps the, the, the flavour of it didn't feel that brilliant. I don't know, what do you think? Well, that's, and it was a, I, okay, it's a huge surprise, but also I guess it shouldn't have been. And, and really, if one person can end something, then yeah, was it really a thing, yeah, you know? That's true, that's a good point. Actually, and yeah. I don't, when I was raising my kids, I have two grown kids, and they would do things that were ridiculous. And you, know, you look at it, well, is this developmentally appropriate, you know, when they're at that age? And I think when you consider where we are with the whatever it is we're going to call it, movement, whatever, when you think of it in terms of commons, you know, and then you also think it, you know, like through the lens of diffusion of innovation theory this is developmentally appropriate there's yeah. it's this is this is yeah it's yeah should happen that's right mm -hmm. i think then the problem is like just the boring logistical stuff you know in order to run a conference you need a a body that will sign the, the contracts you know right david was saying you know that lumen you know it's like you you're on the hook like for three hundred thousand dollars like in order to book the hotels and you know it's like an order they get that back but you, know, you can't just do that with a small budget and with so there is some of that kind of like, just how does it happen? You know, you can have the the will, you know, but how do you actually make it happen? But I think there are, yeah. there are different players in that space who might form some kind of coalition, maybe, you know. Sort of. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But will it be the same one? Like no. in the closing remarks, when she mentioned the meeting that had happened, yeah. and there's right, some, so like, Spark, oh, okay, there's Craig also, Commons, yeah. Yeah. Those kind of people, yeah. yeah, but I can't that. write a check for $300,000. No, I can write one. It just wouldn't. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I even have my check. Yeah. 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 So that's a good point. There's a balance of uh, how to just like the, the pragmatic side and practical side going forward, not to mention, yeah, then the, just how to approach it um, theoretically or okay. ideologically. So, yeah, and I, an opportunity to do more. I know a lot of people are interested in doing more kind of distance. They're thinking about environmental impact of in-person conferences, those kinds of things. Uh, they're all interesting topics to discuss. Yeah, I think that, that, that's really that's that's right. It's, it's an interesting. It's an interesting thing to think about, not just what we do with the open ed conference, but is is a conference the thing you want to do? You know, it's like and I think particularly in things like environmental impact, but also just should we do things that are more based around producing an output? You kind of actually get something like this. So I was going to say, uh, Jennifer's joined us. You should have speaker rights now, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer Hi, was everyone. also uh, open. Yes, Hi, Jennifer. I was. Hi. Are you How's back Ireland? in Michigan now? Uh, even colder in Minnesota. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> Michigan's colder. So <laughs> maybe they have snow. <laughs> it, is, it is pretty cold. <laughs> cold and wet. Yes, yes, but exactly. Pretty, it looks just like Ireland's printed. Yeah, I feel right. like I'm at Disney World or something because it looks so perfect. Yes, yeah, but do you need? To... No, 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 no. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, also I arrived yesterday morning straight from Phoenix, but my baggage didn't turn up. My baggage stayed stayed in Philadelphia. So is it still not here? <laughs> it's just come up. It's just arrived. So. Well, I'd, you look very nice. I, 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 I did an emergency shop yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So, so and so you didn't that. fly through Dallas? No, I came. It was yeah, Phoenix, Philly, Philly, Philly. Oh, okay, mm. okay. So we were just saying, Jennifer, sort of impressions of Open Ed, you know, and the the bombshell announcement. So I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I had a chance to catch up with you and what you what you thought of it. So just what were your views? Yeah, it was definitely a surprise um, and really gave an interesting um, kind of interesting start to the rest of the conference then rather than having it at the end. So, um, yeah, so I, you know, 
I don't have any insight on what led up to that. Probably just speculations like everyone else does. But, um, but it will be curious to see, you know, what, what happens with that, where that goes. Um, I wasn't entirely surprised either, just having been at Open Ed for the past several years and, you know, kind of listening to the conversations and some of the dynamics, but it was still um, quite a surprise. Yeah, I imagine I think it was. one of the interesting things that might happen is. Sorry, go on, Jameson. Um, just that um, I, I, I <laughs> I'll go. Just <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, you go. You you go, Jameson. Okay. Um, just that uh, I imagine it was uh, a big surprise. Um, it was to me too. I didn't have any special insights um, from even working at Lumen, um, but uh, I knew it was on. It was definitely on the radar um, that David was going to be making a decision with uh, the committee about it. Um, but I think I think also uh, it it started to become uh, a distraction from hopefully what you're trying to do at a conference when you know. Um, Having Lumen be at the helm and having David at the helm, this is this started to be, I think, having conversations that were important, and it was good to bring up those concerns. But then uh, also, you know, um, yeah, uh, I think there's more constructive ways to have those conversations, and um, maybe with the conference changing shape, there'll be opportunity for that. I also think maybe. Um It also opens up, opens up a lot in the kind of conference diary, which is quite good. Maybe I, I don't know, but you end up going to the same conferences all the time. You know, it's like um, it'd be quite nice to if there's another slot there to go, try something different. You know, it's like to maybe go to so that we were just saying that this conference is quite interesting because it's not all about open ed. It's like it's, it's online learning really. So it's like there's quite a bit of open distance education, online learning generally, open education. You know, and I think. Being in those, hearing those slightly different voices and all those things that intersect around openness, you know, so openness is only part of a, a bigger picture, um, is really useful as well. So I think you know, may, maybe not having the open ed in your, your diary won't be a bad thing. I worry though about the access that some of the smaller schools would lose. Like if we go to more regional conferences, mm. you know, and that was what some of the hallway conversations were about mm. that, you know, well, well, my colleague in Tulsa get to be in the same room with Cable Green. You know, Oklahoma State yeah, is going to be able to right. mm -hmm. afford to send me wherever, but what what do we do to some of the, the smaller schools, you know, if we do? And yeah. so that's, I feel some responsibility. Oh, because OU was talking, and we were saying, well, we should maybe host a big regional one, you know, and try, and I'm, I'm, I, let's do, definitely do that, mm -hmm. but not not as a substitute for getting all these right. folks uh, in the room, you know, getting people able to meet yeah. Martin Weller. Because <laughs> it's a, get, it's the, a big get deal. The Goja penguins, you know, that's right. the important thing. Right. Right. I was in a session, uh, I think uh, the woman's name was Stephanie Pierce, and she runs, um, she, she she did the Southern States over there, so kind of like localized version of it. And so she suddenly had the most timely presentation at the conference. <laughs> that was good. But, but she's, that's really good because she generated a, a pack out on, on, the, on how to organize these events. And she was saying, um, you know, it did allow a lot of people to come to those events. That, that couldn't come to the bigger events so you know in some ways it was more inclusive because people can go you know more locally and it's kind of more focused around their immediate concerns and so they can justify it in terms of travel and those kind of things so mm -hmm. um so but uh, but the question i asked her was exactly that you know, i think you, we will have more of those localized events but then how do you pull the stuff out of those for some kind of like overarching agenda so, so maybe they could do things you know although we'll, we'll focus on local issues there be one or two common threads between those different kind of localized events or something yeah. you know that that you can then pull together or something so, yeah. yeah and I, I think that there's um also the potential um to go you know to have our um those of the experience with open and oer to have more of a presence at just like you're saying these other conferences that maybe even are disciplinarily focused um, I went to a, a conference in Denver, Colorado um, that was focused on uh, 
it's the Society for Teaching of Psychology. And so the psychology faculty, and it was probably about 250 people. And um, so it's all about teaching and learning and, and best practices. And there was an OER kind of, I wouldn't say even a, a thread, but it was, it was dotted throughout the agenda. And it was nice to have conversations about OER in that context um, and open education and open educational practice in that context, rather than being entirely focused on open. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I, I thought it was really fruitful and mm -hmm. interesting. So you, you could argue if you want to have impact, then an open education conference is the place where you're least likely to have it because you're already <laughs> you're kind of preaching to the converted, aren't you? You're much better going to kind of just general practitioner conferences and talking about open educational practice or OER and open textbooks. So actually, you know, we're probably going to the wrong conferences where we just talk to each other and go, "Isn't it amazing? Great! <laughs> we're, we're the best. <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> go us!" Yeah. yeah, but that's true because if I my way hadn't been paid by the research fellows to open ed. I wouldn't have been able to come here, mm. right? So that's maybe if we weren't trying to meet the cost of getting to preeminent conference in the States, we would be more able to go other places. Okay, okay. Do, you want to, do you have any other queries about either this conference or open ed or comments? We don't have to stay for the full hour. I know it's uh, Jennifer, what should we definitely go see? What should you go see? It, uh, that yeah, what should we definitely see while we're here? You're in your last screen. What's that? Yes, but I didn't spend a ton of time in Dublin, so I only spent about a less than a day or so. Um, but um, I did a kind of a fun bus tour, you know, hop on, hop off. So if you haven't done that, that's a nice way, kind of a low-key way to see the city and um, decide where you want to go from there. So that. That might be fun to do. It stops at pretty close to Temple Bar and you know. Jameson kind of managed to damage my <laughs> <laughs> You 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 read Jameson? <laughs> right. I, I, we didn't total it, but you know, <laughs> there was some damage in, in the narrow lanes of uh, Galway. Oh wow! Okay. Well, that's we talked about renting a car, and then decided, yeah, I can't even cross the street. Without following other people, yeah, I better. I need not drive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where I was at too. So, the cliffs of Moa are very good. Yeah. Okay, so we're staying a couple days afterwards. Right. Our girls okay. are coming over and. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you've got so it's Galway's about two or three hours to the other side, and then it's down from there. So, so it'd be a full day. You'd be probably right. you'd probably do two from here. Okay, cool. While we're doing our, our tourist advisory board a bit. <laughs> well, look at out and taste the community. Yeah, yeah. See the people in the If you're a Game of Thrones fan, you do a Game of Thrones tour around North Northern Ireland. Yeah. Oh, coast. really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's where they film it all. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, thank you guys for uh, making some time. It's actually good to, to check in with everybody after Open Ed. It was uh, definitely had some. Uh, FOMO going on, so uh, glad to hear um, how it went for you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was good fun. I think you know, despite the kind of like you know the big announcement, and I think despite some of the the rancor beforehand, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it was a good conference. I went to lots of good sessions, and it wasn't. I think I think, I think I've been overly critical about it being too open tech booky, and there were good sessions on open pedagogy mm -hmm. and and those kind of things. So, you know, despite it being a bit kind of North American century, you know, but there's still lots right. of interesting there, you know. So, if it did exist, still, I would, I, I would go again, you know. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you know, I think it's kind of been a bit overshadowed by I think around it, but the conference itself was good, you know, like, and worthwhile. You know. Yeah, very much, very much. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Cool. Okay. Well, um, we, we owe you a, a GoGN penguin uh, and stickers, James, and for next time you meet. All right, Jennifer and Kathy have got their penguins. So, uh. <laughs> James, I look forward to reading your work. It was nice to meet you, and good to see you, again, Jennifer. Yeah, you too. And enjoy the conference, both of you, and hope everything is well with you, Jameson. Likewise. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Safe travels. See ya. Okay. Thanks. Bye.